Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Seaborn, Understanding the Weird Parts. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Facet Grid. Uh, this is one of the most interesting uh, functions in the Seaborn library, and it allows you to visualize uh, data sets with lots of columns that are categorical. Um, what does Facet Grid do? Facet Grid allows us to create lots and lots of mini plots. Uh, why is that interesting? Why is that cool? Well, let me show you. So, First, we'll go ahead and import Seaborn, and we'll import their TIPS data set. Uh, the TIPS data set is one of those data sets that has a lot of categorical columns. Uh, so for example, it's got sex, it's categorical, smoker, uh, day, time, e even size is categorical. It's an ordinal column, uh, understandably, but we can use it as, uh, as a category itself. Facet Grid will use these categorical columns, and depending on what you specify, it will make a graph, a little mini plot, for each categorical column that you specify. So let me show you. Uh, we've got facet grid here. Uh, it takes in three main arguments. It takes in uh, whatever the data is. In this case, it's going to be tips. It takes in column, and it takes in row. Column and row specifies how many mini graphs you should make. So for example, if we go ahead and we specify column equals smoker, what this means is I get one graph on the left and one graph on the right, one for being a non-smoker, and one for being a real smoker. If I wanted to go ahead and specify a day, for example, there's a couple of days in this data set. There's one, two, three, four days in the data set. So we'll make one column for each day. Now what's cool about this is you can also specify a row. So in this case, we can specify the row being sex, for example, male or female. In this case, it will create four, one for each day, and then two, one for sex male, one for sex female. Okay. A little bit uh, hard to understand the abstract, so let's look at an example where this might be useful. Let's visualize the total bill in a couple of different situations. First, uh, where the smoker is yes, the time is lunch. Second, where the smoker is yes, and the time is dinner. Next, when the smoker is no, and the time is lunch. Next, when the smoker is no, and the time is dinner. Kind of cool, right? So based on this, we know that the smokers are all going to be the top distributions, and the non-smokers are all the bottom distributions. The time lunch is going to be the left distributions, and the time dinner is all going to be the right distributions. And we get to see uh, the, the differences in the distribution of total bill across these different categories. So for example, we can notice that lunchtime definitely has smaller bills, uh, whereas dinner time has larger bills. And it seems like the non-smokers might have uh, less variance than the smokers. So smokers at dinner seem to have quite a lot of variance. This can be incredibly informative, especially if those categorical columns are intrinsically meaningful to your data analysis. So how do we go ahead, so once we specify our little, uh, the columns and the rows, how do we go ahead and determine what to plot? Uh, so fortunately, Seaborn makes this pretty easy. Uh, once you go ahead and make a facet grid, you'll go ahead and get a grid. And this grid has two functions, uh, one I'll describe here, one I'll describe in a bit. Uh, the first function is called map. So map will go ahead and take this disk plot. It will take whatever you're interested in plotting and plot it over uh, these values. Uh, you need to specify uh, so which numeric value you're actually interested in plotting. So for example, if we do sns.dispplot, we could plot the total bill or we could plot tips, right? Uh, and this would give us uh, different distributions. Uh, in addition to this, you can even pass more in. Uh, you can pass keyword arguments. In this case, you can pass the color to go ahead and you know, make this look nice. Uh, the second thing that I thought that you could pass in might be, so for example, we could do a scatter plot, total bill, tip, and you might be able to pass in the size. So each of these little points, we could go ahead and represent them with different size data points. So for example, we could use the size of the party to represent larger uh, points in our plot. This is something that you could do with the sns.scatter or scatter uh, plot, but the functionality didn't seem to be there initially. Um, when I went ahead and I did g.map, it gave me this sort of nasty error. Um, and generally, this Seaborn documentation is phenomenal. Uh, and, it, and it really is. But there are a couple of little holes. And hopefully, this will clear up some issues for you all out there. Um, the problem is that in order to go ahead and get this to work, scatter plot to work, we needed one more argument that it was hard to pass in. So what argument did we need? Well, if we go ahead and just make a normal scatter plot, we can see we need an extra argument called data. The scatter plot needs a reference uh, passed in as data equals tips to the original data set. Previously, you didn't pass in that reference. Uh, 
each this sort of sns.facet grid, it will go ahead and will pull out the total bill and it will pull out the tips and it will pass them as the x and the y, but it doesn't pass a reference to that, uh, to the whole data set. And remember, it actually needs to pass four different references to the whole data set. It will need to pass a reference to the smoker at the lunchtime data set and a, and a smoker in the dinner time, uh, non-smoker lunch and non-smoker dinner. So we need to pass these all as sort of like mini references to the data set. Uh, at first, I was really bummed. I thought this was impossible. But there is one function that Seaborn allows you to use that makes this much better. And this is called map data frame. Uh, this one's pretty good. And you know, for the most part, I would just use this one instead. Uh, this is really great, especially with all the Seaborn functionality. Um, what map data frame will do is it will pass into Scatterplot a reference to that sub data frame. So for example, for the smoker yes and the time lunch, it will pass into um, it will pass into scatterplot uh, data equals this small subset of data frame, and that small subset of data frame is going to be uh, the smoker yes and time lunch. That way, you can go ahead and use size equals size. So for example, uh, the size of these data points, as you can see, will be the size of the party involved. Um, and it makes sense. You, the people with the higher bills generally have higher party sizes. So pretty cool. Uh, Facet Grid has a couple of extra little goodies. I'll go ahead and just show them here. Uh, you can specify the column order. So for example, we want smoker no first and smoker yes second. We can uh, make that opposite. Um, just show you here, smoker yes, true, smoker no. Um, you can also go ahead and you can uh, change the access labels. So total bill, US dollars, instead of total underscore bill. So make that much, uh, much prettier. Um, you could tip, uh, capitalize it. So that's pretty nice. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, you can also, and finally, specify the uh, titles. Uh, the final thing that I kind of want to show you here is that uh, sometimes your categorical columns can be of high cardinality. So that means there's, there's lots of different categories. Uh, so for example, size is one of these categorical columns. Uh, so in this uh, data set, we have six sizes, one, two, three, four, five, six. So parties of six would often dine at this place as well. Um, now, if you wanted to go ahead and put those all in one column, it would look pretty messy. So uh, you've got these all in this one column. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, maybe you can sort of squint and look down at it. Uh, the better thing to do is go ahead and specify column wrap. All this does is it goes ahead and says, let's put the first three on the first column and then the latter three on the next column. So pretty useful. All this being said, Facet Grid is an incredibly useful C1 functionality. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't teach it initially, but for any data set where you're trying to extract out relationships that might vary across categories, this is so incredibly useful. I can't really have enough of it. So I hope that you've liked the video. As always, leave a like, a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if you did. Otherwise, just let me know what you didn't like. I'm happy to change. Well, that's it. And thanks from Data Talks.